people are doing this around the world right now? How many miners? We are don't there? know. Which is really interesting. Again, it's one of those fascinating things about Bitcoin. We don't know. We don't know who they are. We don't know how many they are. We don't know where they are. And so we don't know why they're doing this. Um, is it, is well, we do guy... know why, because it's profitable. Right. Uh, people can say, yes, I'm a miner and I have this warehouse. Here, come bring your TV crews. Let's do a tour. Uh, and we can calculate um, by reference uh, how much computing is being used and how much energy is being used to do these calculations because the numbers are in the blocks. Uh, but we don't know how many different companies, uh, individuals are doing this. It's hundreds, thousands, um, and anyone can join or leave this system anytime they want. Uh, and new people join with new computers that are faster and more efficient all the time. And, and all these miners keep Bitcoin alive. It keeps Bit, makes Bitcoin what it is today. They are among those who keep Bitcoin alive, but I'm not a miner, but I keep a copy of the Bitcoin blockchain on my computers, several copies in fact. And my computers are also verifying all of the transactions, including verifying the work of the miners. Um, if the miners all disappeared overnight, uh, the blocks would stop being issued, but I would still have a copy of it to be able to verify it. Um, interestingly enough, and here's another really incredible invention that happened here. Satoshi Nakamoto designed a system whereby if more miners join the game, um, what happens practically speaking is that as more miners are trying to find this um, proof for each block, uh, they produce blocks faster than 10 minutes. And so every two weeks, um, the entire global system recalculates how difficult it should be to find this proof. If blocks have been produced faster than 10 minutes, then it gets more difficult. If blocks have been produced slower than 10 minutes, then it gets easier. So the game dynamically adjusts. Think of this as you've got a bingo board, right? Or a Sudoku puzzle. And there's a bunch of people, there's 20 people in the room and they're playing. Well you run a game every 10 minutes on average. Now, if you double the number of people playing in the bingo hall, you'd probably be running games faster because someone would make a bingo somewhere in the room twice as likely because you have more bingo cards out there. So what you do is when the, the number of people playing in the room doubles, you make the bingo sheet twice as large. Well, now it's gonna go back to the same amount of time on average to find one. If uh, half your bingo players left, it would get slower for a while. And then after two weeks, you'd reset it, make it half as big, and then it would go back to the same time. So the 10 minute heartbeat is what stays stable. And the number of miners determine how difficult it's going to be. And if more of them join, it gets more difficult so that we stay at 10 minutes. And if some of them leave, it gets easier. So we stay at 10 minutes. And that way that Algorithm has grown from one miner, Satoshi Nakamoto, on a laptop doing blocks by themselves to today, an industrial infrastructure that produces um, $100 billion worth of computer systems a year and, and electricity use and is doing the mining. And over time, through all of these adjustments every two weeks, they're still producing blocks at exactly the same rate. And that's all done by the algorithm or the software that Satoshi Nakamoto created? Yeah, it's basically market economics implemented in a software algorithm. Um, supply, demand. Um, the, the demand is for a block every 10 minutes and depending on the supply, we change the difficulty price to adjust. So it'll forever be 15, or it will for forever be 10 minutes, 10 minute yes. increments. Unless we change the rules, but in order to change the rules, you have to have everybody change the rules simultaneously and agree to change the rules. Meaning every user of, of Bitcoin? That's everybody who's verifying the rules, which is every user who's running the software has to agree. Otherwise, if they see a block that doesn't have the necessary preconditions to be the correct difficulty, the correct timing, the correct amount of reward, they will say, this isn't valid according to my rules, rejected. And this is the other fascinating thing, which is that this runs a radical democracy where um, 
every participant in the system is deciding whether to accept or not the results of the computation, every block and every transaction in it based on a set of rules. And um, in order to change the rules, you have to have like a constitutional supermajority. Everyone has to agree to change the rules, which means that it takes quite a bit of effort and coordination to change the rules, which means that you get a very high degree of confidence that the rules are not going to change arbitrarily. Um, what Bitcoin is doing today, I'm confident it's going to do tomorrow. Why? Because it's very difficult to change the rules. Now, remember when I said earlier on the one of the reasons or the main reason why money has value is because I'm confident that the dollar I have in my hands today will be able to buy me something more or less of equivalent value tomorrow. That confidence that it will remain useful, that it will remain running, that it will still mean something. Mm -hmm. Well, so Bitcoin does that with an algorithm. Um, it makes it so difficult to change the rules that it can build a long-term expectation of continuity. And every day that goes by, um, people say, oh, Bitcoin's dead or it's dying. It's going to die this time. Watch my words. It really is going to die. And then you wake up the next morning and it's not dead. And that becomes the narrative. I thought this thing was dead in 2013. I thought this thing was dead when they arrested the CEO. There is no CEO. I thought this thing was dead when X happened. Um, there's a website for that. It's called Is Bitcoin Dead? Um, hmm. I think .com. And you go there and it just displays the word no. Wow, is that that just says no in big letters? It just says no. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a silly meme, but actually, what it tells you is about the narrative that provides stability and robustness in this system, uh, which is that no matter how many times you've heard that this thing is dead, um, mm -hmm. you then get up six months later and you're. Um, idiot friend who can't stop talking about this thing reminds you that it's not yet dead. And that can confound people's expectations because very, very serious economists, very, very serious bankers, very, very serious government ministers have told them repeatedly that this thing is dead or will die.